What's up, guys? My name is Jeff. I go by the stage name Esper, and this is the Akai Force. Tonight, I'm going to go over some of its basic functions and how to make a beat with it. Whether you're new to the Akai Force or you're thinking about getting one, by the end of this video, you should have a better understanding of how it all works. So let's just dive right in. I have an empty project open right now. All that it has is an audio track for my voice. We can go to the mixer to look at that and you can see the levels of the microphone coming in. The microphone is going directly to input one on the back of the force. And we can see that by going to the inserts and IO. Input one is selected and monitoring is on so that you can hear me. Directly below that, there are four effects inserts and we can add an effect to our voice or whatever is in that track by pressing the effects inserts. Then you can use the rotary encoder to add an, an effect. effect. You can press the on and off button to turn it on and off and you can go in to edit it further by pressing the pencil icon. You can edit any of the parameters of the effect or you can go through some presets and check them out. There's an on and off button in the corner here. Hello. Hello. You get the idea. You can also save your own custom presets from here. Let's go back. You can delete an effect by pressing the trash icon and you can exit the screen by pressing close. Let's get into making beats. So making beats. Um, first thing we got to do is add some instruments. Um, there's a couple ways you can do this. You can hold one of the empty track select buttons at the bottom. We'll hold number two. It'll pull up a menu and we'll add some drums. And it added our drum track there. If we want to add some uh, plug-in instruments, we can uh, do it the same way. Or we can, from matrix view or mixer view, press the plus icon in the track header and it'll pull up the menu as well. If we want to add multiples of the same type of track, we can hit advanced. We can select the type of track, plugin, and however many you want to add. For this demo, we will add two and do it. And it added our two plugin tracks. There are a couple of limitations with the force. Um, one of the big ones being you can only have eight plugin tracks and eight audio tracks. The way around this is to bounce your plugin stuff to samples and load it into a drum track and you can have well over a hundred drum tracks. So there are ways around it, um, but we will save that for a more advanced video. Moving on, let's add some sounds to our drum track. So select your drum track. You can do it with the button down here or you can do it from the track header and go to menu, browser, don't worry about my menu looking different. If it does, um, I am running a beta version, um, but I'm not going to cover any sort of beta functionality. Anything I'm doing here can be done straight out of the box. So let's add some drum sounds. If you have any custom sounds or custom kits, they will be found in places. You will be able to see your SSD drive, your SD card, and your USB here. Um, but for this demo, we will use the factory content. So we'll go to kits and we'll pick something real basic. Oh yeah. So I click the rotary encoder and it loaded it into our drum track and we should be ready to go. We'll go back to our mixer and go to step sequencer. So here's our drum track. Pretty cool. So um, here's where we can start entering notes. So I want to do some kicks. This is our velocity settings over here. This would be hard and this would be really soft and everything in between. The little blue one, that one is as played. So as hard as you enter the note, that will be the velocity that is entered. For my kick, I want them pretty uniform and hard and we will just do max velocity and we will enter them now. So we got a little kick pattern going there. Let's add some clap. 
We'll go a little bit lighter with the clap. Add some hats, but we'll do that as played, so as I enter them, they will be kind of fluttering. So we got a little beat going there. If you notice, uh, the sounds are audible when I select a note. If you don't want that, you can actually hold select and select your note silently. In case you're playing live or something and you don't want those to be audible, um, holding select and then selecting your drum note will do that. So we got a little drum loop going. Um, it's only two bars long right now. If we want to make that longer, we can hold shift and down here on the bottom row where it says double, we can hit double and it doubled the length to four bars. And we can play it now. And you'll notice the playhead's gonna go off screen. That's because it's on the next two bars. To access those bars, we would go and hold step sequencer and then you can access the additional bar. If you add even more bars, that's how you would access them as well. If we had eight bars, your um, five and six bar would be here, seven and eight would be there, and then so on. And then you can get back to the first set right there. So we have an eight bar, or no, we have a four bar drum loop going now um, and now let's add some bass notes to it so let's pick a sound um, there's a couple ways we can do that we can double tap the track header for the plugin and we can go down here we can see that hype is um, loaded I don't want hype I want baseline baseline is now loaded you can go back in here and you can also choose the preset from here um, but I want to see what I'm doing. So the better way to do it is to press menu and go to track edit. And then in here, we can edit the synth parameters. You may not be able to see that because baseline's really white. Um, but you can go in and edit any of the synth parameters and save your own patches or anything from here. Um, for this demo, we will choose something pretty basic. We'll just choose the sub preset. So, right now, we have notes down here at the bottom of the step sequencer instead of drum hits because we are on an instrument track. Um, to change what notes are here, we can hold shift and press note. Actually, we need to be in notes mode first. Shift and notes when you're in notes mode. And then you can see the scales. You can actually go to chords, um, harmonize, whatever you want. But for this demo, we'll do scales. I have the root note set to A in natural minor because I am basic like that. And I have it set to start on root. By default, it will actually start on fourth. You'll look like this. I like it like that. And we can play those in. So let's go back to our step sequencer. So let's enter some bass notes. I want them kind of hard. So let's do them on the kicks. So. I don't want that last one to be the same. So we'll go a little bit higher up. So we got a little base, basic bass pattern going on there. Um, say you don't want to use step sequencer. Um, you want to actually draw out the notes a little bit longer, but 
you kind of like what you have going on here. Um, I just want to extend this last note. Um, you can press clip up here at the top and that'll pull up the actual grid. You can go in here, press grid at the top, and we can go over here and we can see where that node is. Where? So I got the select tool, I'll select that node, and I can edit the end point. Take the encoder, and right now it's set to a timing correct value, so it's gonna lock to the grid, but you can turn timing correct off and it won't. It'll, uh, won't snap. You can choose don't snap and you can fine adjust that. So now when I play it, cool. So we have a little bit of a longer note there at the end. So now that we have our drums and bass, let's go back to the matrix view and let's add a pad. So um, we'll go ahead and select that next plugin track. Then we'll go to menu, track edit, um, double tap the preset. We'll go to the warm pads. Let's see, I like the angel strings. We'll use that for the video. Okay, so I'm in notes mode currently. I can. <laughs> I can play the notes live. Um, pads don't make sense uh, to step sequence, so um, playing the pads live would be more ideal or drawing them in. Um, what we can do is we can go back to the matrix and with the clip selected, you can press clip and you can set the length of the clip. So if we wanted to do an eight bar recording, we could do eight bars and then do it. And it gave us an eight bar empty clip to record into. Now we could do that or I'm going to delete that and we can go back to the matrix. We can actually uh, record without the restraints of having a preset bar count. So we can kind of make it up as we go. Um, the way to do that is to turn clip length off. So to do that would be shift and length down here at the bottom. When it's lit, it means that it is set to your clip length. Um, when it's off, you have to manually press the clip again to stop recording on the next bar. So this is the way I prefer to work with the force. Um, the way I do it, because naturally, you can't see um, the launch matrix while you're playing the notes in notes mode. Um, you could do it on the screen, but tapping the screen to start recording and stop recording is a little bit, um, I don't know, sketchy. So the way I like to do it is I like to press notes and launch at the same time, and that'll split the pads where I have the launch matrix on top, the notes mode on bottom, and I can be in the synth on the screen. So what we need to do in order to record live is we arm the recording. We have record arm selected down here and then that track is armed. So when I play it and record is enabled, it will record into whatever clip is selected. So we'll start our loop. Okay, we'll arm the recording. Recording is on. So all I have to do is tap a clip that's empty and it will start recording on the next bar. So we'll watch our bar count go by.
bit of a base there um, to work with. Um, say we wanted to do some filter sweeps or something like that with that pad to kind of spice it up. The way to do that would be to hold knobs mode and go to track and you'll notice that a bunch of parameters for the track that I am on shows up on the knobs. I have cutoff and resonance there. There's an additional page if you tap knobs that'll pull up even more parameters for that synth. Tap it again, get back to my cutoff and resonance, and then we can press play. Okay, and one thing to keep in mind about the notes mode, and any of the modes for that matter, is you can octave shift around, so you aren't trapped with what's right here. Um, if this wasn't where you wanted to be, we could hold shift and press octave up. And that works in the drum modes as well. If I go to the drum sequencer, or the drum notes mode or sequencer, you can hold shift and press octave up and it goes to the next bank of pads in the drum program. You have uh, eight banks of pads per drum program, so you can have 128 actual drum hits per drum program. It gets pretty crazy. So, back to where we were. So we've got our nice little uh, skeleton of a track here. We don't have any melody or anything like that, but that doesn't matter for this demo. Um, now what we want to do is kind of arrange some of it um, kind of build it up and the way to do that is through copying and pasting and deleting stuff So as you can see, I only have one launch scene here and I want to extend that So the way to do that is um, I think I want to start with the baseline. So I'm going to go ahead and copy these And the way I'm doing that is I'm holding copy and I'm tapping the pad I want to copy and then I'm continuing to hold and tapping empty pads. Um, let go of copy and then go to your next one and start going through it. Now I have all those clips I recorded are in all of those scenes going down. Um, now I wanna start kind of removing some stuff um, to kind of build it up and then break it down. So the way to do that would be to delete some of it. So um, let's delete the drums from there and the pad. And then let's delete the drums from there. And then we will delete the pad from there and the drums from there. So a basic little arrangement with the bass line kind of tying it all together there. Um, and what we can do from here is we can go into each of those clips and edit them and make variations of each other and actually build out the track vertically. But to give a little demo of how this works, We'll go ahead and launch a whole scene.
you can see how easy it is to get jamming and just coming up with new ideas by building these tracks out like that. So I hope this was helpful and I hope it gave you a good start with the force. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments. I'll try and answer as many as I can. Um, you can see me online at espre.live and I have a bunch of videos there of live performances and such. Um, thanks for tuning in.